To see the world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wildflower, to hold infinity in the palm of your hands and eternity in an hour. This poem by William Blake, referred to as the Auguries of Innocence, is said to describe with perfect or near perfect accuracy the MDMA or the ecstasy experience. And I really think that it's very accurate in terms of trying to capture the bliss and the perfect state of nature that one feels on the ecstasy experience. So the purpose of this video is to help educate people on MDMA or ecstasy so that they can get a grasp or an understanding of what this compound is and what it does and also to describe my feelings about or my thoughts on how the MDMA experience relates to relational and compassionate anarchism and how in the long run it actually allowed me or provided me with the insights I needed to create the philosophy. For starters, MDMA is the actual chemical compound in ecstasy tablets. Ecstasy is just a street name. It's also been referred to as Adam and more recently as Molly. Generally speaking, ecstasy is just a tablet of MDMA, but it could be adulterated with other chemicals or substances on the market. And Generally, ecstasy has an inscribed logo that sets each tablet apart from the other. Molly is generally just loose powder and it's also said to be either MDA or MDMA. Generally speaking, it's MDMA, but it can also contain adulterants. It is not pure like some people, or necessarily pure like some people believe it to be. The compound itself causes some really intense effects and the most important effects that this compound causes is a it provides an individual with a deep sense of empathy a deep sense of attunement with other human beings the technical term for this is called empathogenesis or it is referred to as an empathogen this means it allows us to get in touch with other people's feelings and to actually empathize with them. So not only are we getting in touch with other people's feelings, we're also getting in touch with our own. We suddenly have an understanding of the rhythm of and the thrum of our own emotional inner worlds. And this allows us to really get on the same wavelength with other people and to have very meaningful conversations and historically MDMA has actually been used in couples counseling and in therapy to help couples overcome their problems because the compound actually dissolves those boundaries that people have where they're afraid to connect with others and to get in touch with others on a fundamental level. Some would even say that it allows people to get in touch on, with others on the level of the soul. And this is a really beautiful thing. It's a very powerful thing with MDMA. Now the other aspect of MDMA, and this fits right into the empathogenic nature of the compound, but it's also what's been referred to as an intactogen or an intactogenic. And all that refers to is our tactile sensations, so our sense of touch. Our sense of touch on MDMA becomes super heightened and super expressed. And every time that we touch something, such as, our, such as ourselves or another person, it really in, enhances that feeling. It feels super palpable, almost supernatural when you touch yourself or other people. It feels very good. It's, it's what provides partially a person with this sense of ecstasy, which with this sense of belonging in the moment, and but really belonging to nature. It's a beautiful, amazing experience, and it's why some individuals 
and the individual who actually referred to the name of the compound, Michael Clegg referred to it as ecstasy, and this is why, because of this tactile nature combined with the empathetic nature of the compound. And before I move on and talk a little bit about how this compound relates so closely with anarchism and how it's useful in anarchistic circles, I just want to provide some common warnings or something that you should be aware of were you to decide to take MDMA for the first time. First point is there's a lot of myths about the compound, and I want to debunk one myth first. There's some people who have alleged that MDMA will actually put holes in your brain. It'll actually, actually eat your brain out. This was based on an old paper published way back in the early 90s or 80s that was really propagandistic. The paper suggested that this was the case, that, the, that MDMA would eat holes in the brain. But later, those authors actually came out and retracted those findings. They said that the study was flawed for whatever reason. So it is a myth that MDMA puts holes in your brain or causes damage to the brain whatsoever. Now there is the possibility that, especially in a very small sliver of the population, MDMA can actually cause neurotoxicity or cause basically the deg deg degradation or the death of neurons. But this is in a very small subset of the population and it usually occurs with higher doses of the compound. Of course, the other issue, which I already alluded to, is that MDMA can come adulterated if purchased on the black market. So anybody who's looking to buy MDMA should actually either get a test kit, test that compound to make sure it's the right thing, or know and trust your actual sources if you were to go out and to purchase the compound. So that is especially important. And the two other things that you have to know about MDMA if you decide to take it recreationally or if, especially if you decide to take it at a music festival, which, which is fairly common. A lot of people like to take the compound, go out into the rave scene, and to dance all night long. Here's the thing. MDMA naturally increases your body's temperature. And if you don't drink enough water, you could literally overheat and, and burn yourself up from the inside out and there have been reported deaths as a result of people overheating while dancing on MDMA. So make sure that you're not in a super hot environment or if you're on the dance floor to take breaks and to constantly have water with you and on hand at all times. That is of utmost importance whenever anyone is going to decide to take MDMA. Another thing that you have to be aware of is sort of the opposite response to that. And that is a lot of people, when they start rolling on MDMA, they may experience a little bit of anxiety. And the anxiety on the compound can actually make people think that they are overheating even though they're drinking water at a leisurely rate and keeping their body temperature down. They might actually over drink. They might drink so much water that they die of water intoxication. So it's very important that you understand that you're, if you're drinking water casually, you're probably drinking enough water because you don't want to over drink water and essentially poison your body and then die of intoxication at that point. So that's also important to bear in mind. Whenever you do MDMA also for the first time, it's very important that you, that you make sure that you have somebody with you. A trip sitter is always important because besides the intactogenic and the empathogenic effects of the compound, <laughs> The compound also causes an internal experience of bliss and a quasi-spiritual experience where you're able to introspect a lot easier and you're able to solve and con solve your own problems and contend with your the own internal disputes and struggles that you're dealing with, especially as they regard your ability to love yourself. I remember when the first time I used MDMA, I had a super enlightening experience where I realized that I was a lot smarter than I was. I realized that I can do a lot more than I was doing because I felt like in the past I had dealt with trauma. And then not only did I deal with trauma, but it felt like, or I felt like everyone told me that I would not make anything of myself in life, that I was not any good, 
and this was sort of reflected in my high school grades. I did very poorly in school earlier on and wasn't able to meet the grade, but actually that was a reflection of the institutions and the way that people treated me at the time, and I realized this on MDMA, and I sort of came out of my shell and came to terms with myself, and at that point I also came to realize the importance and providence of the anarchist philosophy. So this is sort of part two of this video. In my opinion, MDMA as a therapeutic substance, as a relational substance based on the empathogenic and the intactogenic traits, actually facilitates relationships with people that are indicative or exemplify what it would be like to live in an anarchistic community. Because in my mind, as a relational anarchist, if we have very powerful, compassionate, and empathetic connections with people, we are already living in an anarchistic society because we're able to resolve our disputes without resorting to violence. And we're also able to resolve any potential sociopathy because it breaks away barriers between people and allows us to empathize even if we already have those issues. Now I'm not saying there won't be some sub subset or some small piece of the population that won't respond well to this. We do know that some people take MDMA and don't really have any effect and if these people are really strong sociopaths or psychopaths there is that possibility that they won't respond well. But I think that most people even people who we have maybe referred to as a sociopath can react to the compound and finally find themselves and realize that what their experience isn't true sociopathy or psychopathy, but actually just past trauma that they have tried to cope with or deal with in a manner that caused them to shut off the emotional side of themselves and not connect and relate to other people. So this is almost a panacea or a cure-all for that type of traumatic experience. And this is precisely why counselors in the past and present have used MDMA in counseling sessions, especially for traumatic disorders, uh, PTSD specifically, but also in couples counseling for couples to connect and come together with each other. So the whole idea behind my philosophy of relational anarchism is this notion that we we can connect with other people for the purposes of building a freer society, for the purposes of freeing ourselves from the tyranny of statism, from the vagaries of violence through rulership, through governments, through states. So this MDMA experience is really quintessential to showing us how that would work and how that would function. Something about the pharmacology of MD MDMA also that I mentioned earlier, and I kind of want to touch on that while I'm here, is that we receive these experiences of connection and attunement with other people because the compound literally dumps serotonin in our brain. And anybody who knows anything about biology knows that we were not evolutionarily geared to have serotonin, this much serotonin dumped at once in the brain. So there is a, a little bit of a warning that anybody who experiences these feelings on MDMA may have feelings of depression and feelings that are not in line with how they felt on the experience and the connections that they felt on the experience up to a week after because it takes the human brain roughly a week to return to baseline serotonin levels, especially if a person is predisposed to having de more depressive feelings. So always bear that in mind as well. But yes, this compound literally teaches us how to be anarchists. It teach us, teaches us how to find ourselves and how to fine tune our relationships and come to terms with all the shitty things that have happened to us in our own lives and with how, and it allows us to understand the other things or the things that have happened to other people and how their lives have been ridden with violence and chaos and trauma and other tumultuous experiences insofar that it allows a type of connection that is anarchistic in nature. So this is right there in line with being a softer individual, which is part and parcel of the relational philosophy of the relationalist ideas that I've been talking about in past videos on Facebook and in my writings. 
So as long as we have an understanding of MDMA and what it can do for us, we can actually use it to create anarchistic communities. As long as we use it with caution, as I mentioned, the, the potential risks with MDMA. So we have to use it with caution, we have to use it with purpose, and we have to have an understanding of what's going to happen to us and how it's going to work in regards to our communication abilities with other people. But in my own experience, the after effects of MDMA over the long term has actually made my life a lot more livable. It made me a lot more in tune with my own needs and my own desires psychologically. So I've been able to use that to connect better with other people and also in the long run develop this relationalist philosophy, this idea that if we're connecting with other people, we're automatically living in a, in a relationalist state that's antithetical to violence. So it's really a, an absolutely beautiful thing. And therefore, William Blake was right. This is what it's like to experience heaven in a wildflower and eternity in an hour. If anybody has any more questions on the MDMA experience, on using ecstasy to help maybe build philosophies, to build certain kinds of communities, feel free to send me a message. And I know that there's a lot of people who are going to think that these ideas are dangerous, but I think these ideas are very important to consider as we move into the future and as less stigma becomes attached to the compound and it becomes a bit more acceptable to use because, in my opinion, MDMA is a is a tool. It's a tool to help us learn how to leverage our neuropsychology to build the type of societies that we want. And I don't think many people have conceptualized the compound in that way, but it's time that we start looking at it like that. And it's time that we start opening people's minds to the power and the beauty and the different things that this compound can do for people. It's absolutely brilliant. So my name's Sterling Lujan. I'm the Psychologic Anarchist. If you're not already familiar with me, please feel free to just subscribe to my channel uh, in the low bar below and also make commentary if you believe that I provided value today. I appreciate your time.